the National Ignition Facility in California announced a breakthrough in nuclear fusion. We may be able to generate almost unlimited amounts of energy in the future without any carbon emissions. In this video, I'll explain what actually happened that led to the nuclear fusion breakthrough, as well as what it means for people like you and I, and explore some of the challenges that lay ahead. Okay, so we know nuclear fusion could produce a lot of energy, but what exactly is nuclear fusion? If you already know the basics of nuclear fusion, you can skip ahead to this timestamp. I'll explain how it works now if you don't know. Basically, everything is made up of atoms. Me, you, ducky. In every atom, there is a center which is called the nucleus. Almost all of the mass of an atom comes from its nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons. And when we say nuclei, all we mean is that there is just more than one nucleus. Nuclear fusion is the joining or fusing of two nuclei to form a heavier element and generate energy in the process. Scientists are interested in studying nuclear fusion because that's how we know the sun naturally generates energy. The sun generates energy when four hydrogen nuclei fuse together to form a helium nucleus. This occurs in three steps. Firstly, hydrogen nuclei, which are the same as protons, fuse together to make deuterium, a variant of hydrogen. I'll explain deuterium soon. Here, a tiny particle called a neutrino is emitted along with a positive particle called a positron. We now have two deuteriums. The deuterium nuclei fuse with another hydrogen nucleus to form helium. In this case, helium has two protons and a neutron. Photons or light particles are released. Last but not least, these helium-3 nuclei fuse to form helium-4. The helium produced this time has two protons and two neutrons. In this case, two hydrogen nuclei or protons are emitted. But the helium nucleus actually has a lower mass than the mass of the four hydrogen nuclei which came together beforehand. During the conversion of four hydrogen nuclei, about 10 million times more energy is generated than when hydrogen combines with oxygen. In the sun, it works so well because of its strong gravitational force allowing positively charged protons, which repel each other more than Democrats and Republicans on Twitter, to actually fuse together. The problem for us is that we don't have access to such a powerful gravitational force. So in order for nuclear fusion to work on Earth, we would need to generate temperatures well over 100 million degrees in Celsius to overcome the repulsion of such protons and actually lead to nuclear fusion. For the first time since nuclear fusion experiments occurred, nuclear fusion actually produced more energy than it consumed. This is what scientists mean when they say they've reached ignition. The fuel capsule for this experiment consisted of a frozen mixture of deuterium and tritium. Deuterium and tritium are both isotopes of hydrogen, which basically means that they are variants of the same element hydrogen. As isotopes of hydrogen, they both contain the same number of protons, but what differs is the number of neutrons they have. Now these isotopes are used in nuclear fusion reactions because they fuse together more easily, as well as generating more energy. With 192 beams, the world's largest laser was used to heat up a tiny gold cylinder, about the size of a pea, containing the deuterium and tritium capsule. This gold hollow cylinder was used because it can absorb energy and then actually radiate the energy using x-rays to the deuterium and tritium capsule. The outer layers of the capsule exploded outwards. Now this produced a reaction force which accelerated it and compressed it inwards. This process also created shock waves which traveled through the fuel inward. This capsule's inner part was rapidly compressed and caused the hydrogen isotopes to fuse together. The end result was a helium nucleus, a neutron, and energy being produced. Around 15 kettles were able to be heated by the energy produced. What made this attempt so successful? Well, for starters, the laser beam's power had increased by 8%. And what they also changed this time was how the laser energy was actually delivered and focused on creating a more spherical implosion. By reaching ignition, it meant that scientists were able to prove that we may be able to viably produce energy using nuclear fusion. But it is important to emphasize some of the issues that haven't really been talked about regarding this experiment. While ignition technically occurred in this prototype, the amount of energy required to power the 192 beam lasers hasn't really been discussed. In the process of generating energy for the 192 beams of lasers, 
322 megajoules of energy were used. This should raise some eyebrows about how viable nuclear fusion actually is. Then there's a fuel cost. Those used in the US experiment cost tens of thousands of dollars, but these costs need to be reduced by several orders of magnitude. The biggest challenge will be reducing the costs end to end to make nuclear fusion viable. So reaching ignition doesn't mean we'll solve climate change anytime soon. Deuterium and tritium are the inputs for nuclear fusion. Extraction of deuterium via seawater is relatively inexpensive. And we can also artificially use lithium to create tritium. Because we have a plentiful supply of these inputs, it means we're able to generate energy without the burning of any fossil fuels. And as a result, we wouldn't be contributing to global warming. Plus, there aren't any long-lasting radioactive waste elements to worry about unlike nuclear fission. And the amount of energy that can be produced from nuclear fusion is absolutely insane. One kilogram of deuterium and tritium can produce the same energy as 10 million kilograms of fossil fuels. One thing is for sure, the path to clean and sustainable energy is an ongoing journey, but nuclear fusion just took a big step forward. Thank you for watching.